Hello and thank you for watching. My name is John and welcome to Crash Course in Maya version 2011 Bones and Joints series section 4 joint orientation. In this video I'm going to discuss uh, some more details about joint orientation what joy joint orientation means second axis world orientation automatic orientation versus manual orientation and a little bit of mouse grip to make sure that your manual orientation is as precise as you want it. There's a lot to cover, so let's get going. In this scene, you'll notice there are a lot of two joints, uh, one bone objects going on, such as this one right here. You'll notice that they all have labels, such as this one is Z, Y, X, Z minus, none, Z minus. These are all different automatic orientations, all 49 of them that I have set up just for you. Now as I push play, you'll notice that they all go from a straight forward to just a chaotic pattern. And at brief uh, look, you'll notice that they'll, they virtually have nothing to do with each other, except say for this one right here, this row. But in fact, they all actually have a lot in common. For instance, I will select on this one, and you'll notice that the rotate X, Y, and Z are all at zero. Same with this one, same with this one, and same with this one. But when I go to frame 24, you'll notice that the uh, rotates, though they look random, when I go to a different one, they are all the same. All of them. So if they all have the same rotation, how come they look so chaotic and sporadic? That is because of the orientation. So let's uh, figure out what orientation is. Here is an unrelated joint chain. You'll look at the pivots, you'll notice that they have an, uh, a red, a green, and a blue. Well, that's similar to what we have here, red, green, and blue. And as a matter of fact, it's exactly the same. Red is X, Y is blue, green, and Z is blue. Now, if you want to orientate the joints how we want it to, we need to go to the joint, orient, joint uh, box, which is located under the animation tab skeleton orient joint. So we'll go ahead and open up that option box. Go back to reset options. Now some of this looks very similar to uh, the options we had for create joint. As a matter of fact, it's very similar. Exactly similar. I only touched base on it uh, when we were creating the joints, but it's time for me to actually start talking and showing you examples of what's going on. These three letters are in fact the uh, axes, X, Y, and Z. The reason why they have different orders is these are the orders in which Maya is going to evaluate each axis in the rotation. So with this radio button, it's going to uh, evaluate the x axis, second uh, next the y axis, followed by the z axis. If you go over here, it's going to evaluate the z axis, then the x, then the y. And if we go ahead and hit apply you'll notice that the axes going from X, Y, and Z will actually change to Z, X, Y. That's because uh, the first axis is going to be the axis as the axis is going to go down the the, uh, the bone itself. So X, Z, Y, axis is still going to be going point down. And if you go none, it's going to align itself to world orientation. Now we got this. This is uh, what the software is going to assume is the up. In this case, it's going to be plus Y, which means Y up. If you're going to use a software such as uh, the Unreal Engine um, or 3D Studio Max, you might want to go to Z up or Z down, depending on what's going on. But either way, there are tons of orientations to go work with. But since we're working in Maya and Maya has a Y up orientation, we'll just stay with Y up. There are some situations such as an upside down limb or an inverted limb or something like that that you might actually want to work with Y down which I'll show you an example here shortly but the relevance of all of this is actually pretty simple now they had the XYZ we'll notice that the X goes down the bone Y points up and Z points up so X if you rotate the X is going to spin the joint rotate on the Y it's going to turn the joint, and Z is going to elevate the joint. And if you go down here, go to Y, Z, X, it's actually going to be different. 
Y is going to be pointed down the joint, Z is going to be pointed up, and X to the side. So, we're going to go X, which is going to go side to side. I'm sorry, up and down. Y, which is going to spin it around. And Z, which is going to go side to side. But if I want negative, you'll see that this will actually flip itself around. Now, it's not going to really change too much. I mean, you're still going to have the Y spinning the X side to side. I'm sorry, the X up and down and the Y and the Z side to side. But if you look at the values, positive goes down. Goes back to positive. That positive goes up. So the relevance of the second axis world orientation is pretty significant. So let's move on to my next example, which is manual orientation. This is the spine I had from Molly, which the model you saw earlier. And if you look at the, uh, the outline, you see I have everything kind of numbered. Yeah, I have a root joint, I have seven back joints, I have two neck joints, and a head joint, which is the very tip. This is a little thick, so let's uh, modify the display. Mm, that'll work. So we'll just hide all of that. If we look at the uh, joint orientation, from here we have what appears to be a world orientation, so there's, so there's no orientation here. We have X pointed uh, down the bone. Uh, something's going on here. Oh, we got Z point this way. Let's just say, you know what, don't worry about it. We're just going to orient the joint. Uh, default settings, bam. That fixes that, that fixes a few situations going on here. So now let's look over everything again. X pointed down the, uh, the bone, good, good, all right. So it looks like uh, the X is pointed down the bone just like we want it, except when it comes to the tip. In case you're wondering why the tip is all screwed up and on world orientation, that is because it does not have a bone of its own. It is not pointed at a joint, so it has absolutely nothing to work on. The reason why you would have a tip like this is so the joint before it, which is neck two at this current point in time, has a, an orientation to work with. So we can, for all intents and purposes, ignore this uh, orientation. Now, there's something strange going on with the spine, and that involves the z-axis. You'll notice that the z is pointed to the right here, to the left here, to the left here, to the right here, etc. Why this is significant has to do with the rotations, which I will show you shortly. So, I am just going to rotate on the x-axis. Okay, we have some spin, but since x was the first axis that was uh, that we decided to evaluate first, that means it's going to go down the joints, so it should spin, right? Let's check the y-axis. Well, what's going on here? It looks like it's getting squished more than bend. What about the z-axis? Once again, squish instead of a bend. So, we already tried automatic orientation. Now we have to do manual orientation. To do that, we actually have to go to component mode. To do that, you can either push F8, which is the hotkey by default, or you can go up here and push select by component type. Now that's step one of two. A pivot is something very obscure and miscellaneous, so you actually have to go select mis uh, miscellaneous, which is if you're here, just go to the right to the question mark, select miscellaneous components, and you will see your pivots. You will also see them actually much easier than before, so you'll get a better understanding of exactly what's going on. From the looks of it, these pivots are not exactly 100% lined up. This, this one, and these three are actually backwards. So we actually have to manipulate it. We actually have to work it. Now, uh, there's something I'd like to make a note of. One, you can't move it because it's a pivot. You can't scale it because it's a pivot. But you can, in fact, rotate it. Actually, there we go. So I'm rotating it. Now, as I'm rotating it, you'll notice that the joint orient under the joint section in the attribute editor is actually going to change numbers. It's going to change values you can see here. So if that's the case, how come you can't just put a numerical value? 
Unfortunately, that didn't work. You'll notice that when I put a numerical value, it actually rotated the joint altogether, completely destroying your perfectly lined up chain. So we have to do it by hand. <sighs> All right, here we go. Nope, that's not the axis. Here we go. Moving that a little further. There we go, just how we want it. Now, when we rotate this, it'll rotate uh, correctly. But since uh, we wanted things very precise, we actually want this to be exactly 180 degrees the opposite direction. This is where MailScript comes in handy. MailScript is Maya's embedded language. Uh, what that means is it's the scripting language built inside Maya. Everything with everything you do in Maya is done with Maya's embedded language. Extrude, create a circle, create a cube. Everything here is done from Maya's embedded language. Which means how come we can't rotate this from Maya's embedded language or MailScript? As a matter of fact, we are going to do that. If you don't even know what it is, how to use it, I'm going to show you exactly how to use it in terms of using uh, this script example. First thing is you need this uh, command prompt, which is right here. If it's closed, all you have to do is go here, right click. Come on, right click. There we go. Uh, it might be off the screen, but go to a command line checkbox and make sure that is checked. And it'll open up the milk uh, script command line. So, select that, make sure you have the uh, the, 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 the pointer, the, 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 the cursor, that's what I'm looking for. So, and we're going to type rotate. Don't push enter, just type rotate. What this command does is it activates your rotate tool. It is the same as the rotate tool when you push E. Space dash R. This is telling Maya to use relative, uh, rotate relative instead of absolute. Space dash OS. This is going to tell Maya to uh, to rotate in object space, not world space. Space 180. This is 180 degrees, as you so thought. However, we still have two axes to worry about. So space zero, space zero. After we're done with that, put a semicolon at the end to tell Maya that you are finished with this command. So, rotate, relative space, oh sorry, uh, relative object space, 180 degrees on the x-axis. And with the uh, pivot selected, just uh, push enter, and it'll rotate exactly 180 degrees. Fantastic. So let's do that with all of the uh, ones with the Z pointed to the left. I'll just select that, that one and that one. Ah, oh, crap, I, I forgot which, what, was the, what the command was. Don't worry about it. You already typed it in, it is saved in the command prompt. All I have to do is uh, put the cursor in the command prompt, push the up key, up arrow, and it will actually uh, cycle through your previous commands. And everything is now correctly done. So let's test it. We are going to have everything selected, go back to the channel box. Now rotate on the x-axis, is that right? Uh, that's the twist. Y, well everything's looking right. And Z, which is the bend back and forth, well, that's correct. So now our spine is oriented correctly. I know this was a long video and a little bit of a handful, so please feel free to ask me any questions or anything. I'll even put the uh, mail script in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching. The next video is going to be uh, mirroring and naming joints. That video I'm going to discuss uh, how to mirror joints so you don't have to create your arm and hand, which is a pain in the ass. How to uh, make a naming convention so you can easily see what's going on in the uh, in your outliner, etc. And a couple of little tricks if you forgot to name things. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.